So you've raised a very common question, which is how can people make sense of all the science there is about food and lifestyle and what to do and what not to do? And uh, journalists love to write about controversies. That's what sells papers, magazines, and news stories. But as I've mentioned previously, there's so much more we agree on than we disagree on. And there are some fundamental truths that are not controversial. Eating more fruits and vegetables and less red meat. Eating healthier carbohydrates. Uh, avoiding animal fats, saturated fats, and improving the amount of plant-based fats, et cetera, et cetera. We as a society, overwhelmingly, are eating more processed food that is unhealthy and less local, whole food, sustainable, with local agriculture that is very healthy. And part of the reason we're doing this is people have lost the ability to cook. And part of my whole premise for being here is to talk about what is the future role of the skill of cooking in the next century. If you think about it, two or three generations ago, mom or dad or grandma or grandpa taught people to cook in the household. They lived together, they had time, people still cooked and ate dinners together. That's gone. For two generations we've had working parents, both of whom are out of the house. Grandparents are no longer living with grandchildren. Nobody is teaching the younger generation what to do with the basket of food from the local CSA or the local farmer's market. So part of my thesis is learning something about cooking and where food comes from and understanding how to make foods really um, unapologetically delicious, but starting with real ingredients will change a lot. So uh, I'm a big fan of bringing back home ec and cooking and finding out that it's incredibly pleasurable and fun and healthy and sustainable and inexpensive and we should be doing a lot more of it.